a very good morning to all of you. It's my pleasure to host a panel discussion today on a very relevant topic called global trends of money laundering. Money laundering is a huge problem. It is not a problem for a specific country or an organization. It's a fight which every regulator, every country, every economy is fighting. This battle is becoming more challenging because of emerging trends of money laundering. The time has come where the institutions, <clears throat> the organizations and regulators have to have better equipped staff. Somebody who would understand the emerging trends of money laundering and they would be better equipped to fight that battle. In this fight, CAPEX has joined hand with Global Compliance Institute, GCI. GCI is an international financial crime training institute which specialization, which specializes into offering certification courses in AML, compliance, KYC, FATCA, CRS. GCI is supporting the organizations and regulators worldwide in enhancing the skill set of AML staff, better trained staff, better equipped to fight the battle against money laundering. In today's panel discussion, I got a privilege to have industry experts with us who will be sharing their opinions and insight on emerging trends of money laundering, as well as what is the importance of having trained staff on board. at improving the skill set of their employees when it comes to current trends of anti-money laundering. There are departments in the organization, compliance department, risk departments where we have AML staff, but is it not important for employees to go through the continuous training to get themselves updated and more skilled to fight the money laundering? So what is your opinion? Should companies invest on employees education when it comes to AML or how should this particular training and skill set enhancement should be taken. So what are your views on this, please? Maybe Jyoti ji can start and then you can all follow. Sure, sure. Thanks. Thanks for that. Uh, so I think, uh, yes, definitely organizations are investing in uh, training uh, their staff. There is actually now so much content available, even free of cost. But I know that at least bigger organizations have their own internal training programs as, as well that are focused on this. Uh, that's I'm talking about globally. Uh, locally as well, the regulators have courses that are available through their, you know, uh, training institutes, uh, which definitely have a lot of focus on, you know, KYC. I think it's uh, always a, a Tom and Jerry kind of situation with these kind of things, uh, although I would say, because just like we invest in training our people to fight money laundering, uh, I think when you read up uh, uh, content on the net, they'll tell you that even the fraudsters are spending probably multiples of that amounts trying to train them, their people on how to be smart to, uh, you know, get around it, right? So it's always a chorpolis game and you always end up chasing uh, or trying to fight, uh, you know, uh, uh, criminals or try to fight against anti-money laundering in this context. Uh, the other challenge that one faces is that for big organizations, uh, you know, the amount of money that may be spent may be feasible, but for smaller, you know, entities, the cost of compliance becomes actually unwieldy and uh, anti-competitive from their perspective. So there's sustenance versus, uh, you know, compliance kind of debate. Uh, one hears, you know, very uh, openly, right? Because a small proprietor would say that if I'm going to get penalized a lakh, but to I have to spend five lakhs on a software, or we're talking about AI, right? And all of the new tools, 
definitely those costs of using those tools has to become more affordable uh, for it to really uh, be accessible for some of these small you know setups because um, everybody has a right to uh, you know do business so uh, i think the battle or the challenge there uh, comes from the cost element um, i again go back to the john lennon song right uh, imagine if you heard of it so i would hope that at some stage uh, you know institutions organizations um, come together through their trade associations and try to set up platforms for more uh, you know cheaper access to these kind of tools that can fight money laundering whether it is a kyc platform or whether it's a transaction monitoring platform like i know just going to a very uh, example a uh, very specific example on the broker industry the exchanges itself also pop up transactions for brokers to review right and they're expecting uh, you know brokers to look at that uh, it's kind of acknowledgement then therefore that small brokers may not have the sophisticated tools uh, that big organizations may be able to afford and uh, use um, so i think it's a uh, uh, very diverse uh, from that perspective and the need is for a collaboration with the regulators as well as authorities not just locally but also globally uh, because financial crime is actually global um, and uh, the access that people get to the indian markets is not just through india therefore it has to be a coordinated effort and that's where fatf and these kind of organizations as well uh, play an important role in making sure that there are global standards uh, which are being followed whether it's uh, you know important basic factors like ubo or the Uh, what we call the beneficially owned beneficiary ownership right uh, those basic elements of kyc itself there are global standards that are put in place um, so to answer your question i think organizations do spend uh, on training up their people uh, there are entities uh like joginder ji and charan uh, ji ji also mentioned that of course it's beyond just the regulated entities uh the focus uh will also have to go there fiu is doing its bit in terms of bringing them into the reporting framework and expecting those levels to come into play uh but lots has to be done as joginder ji you know uh, concluded absolutely joginder ji uh, my question to you uh, joginder ji that central bank of india rbi uh in their master circular they also talk about continuous training of aml staff so what makes central bank thinking about continuous training is it not sufficient if the companies train their staff once and that's it why the frequent trainings are required yeah i think that, that that's a very important and very interesting uh, you know question the question is uh, we look at effectiveness of the training and in a world where regulations are changing the way people are conducting frauds are changing the way people are laundering money is changing so you have to be agile you have to be always on your feet so therefore there would be a need for continuous training you will have to really see if there is a new way which has come and then there is a new solution which has come so your people will have to be trained i go back a few years actually uh, a few decades maybe uh 2008 was uh, you know when there was a financial crisis and uh, uh of course after that uh, there was a chain a lot of changes came from there after that uh, you know in the financial services and accounting you know especially and that's where there was a complete revamping of the regulations and there were a new uh, regulations that that came and there were there was a complete shortage of people who were expert in those uh, new regulations or who were aware of those regulations and so that's that's where you know this this started and anti money laundering uh, uh specialists are in any case you know if i even uh, look at uh, now are in uh, short supply and therefore this specialty has to come from the institutions you know and people have to be trained for that 
so as as an industry you know i can come and i can i can vouch the kind of uh, increasing trend on frauds and the frauds are also spreading its wings like never before it has gone to all kinds of you know internal facing and external facing uh, you know functions from procurement to sales etc etc and materials to maintenance there is no area which is free from this so how do you really get these uh, you know professionals who are trained and even when we bring all these new uh, you know technologies etc they you need people to uh, to run those uh, you know technologies understand the trends should be able to interpret the uh, data and i always you know say that today one of the biggest skill that is needed is learning to learn because there is so much there to unlearn and relearn therefore there should always be a learning process so learning process is absolutely something which will go on uh, you know in, in a continuous way whether it is in forensic accounting statistical uh, data mining uh, risk management or specialist any uh, you know entry money laundering uh, you know training so therefore it is very important that we have to keep a constant emphasis on uh, all of these uh, experiences and skills even things like you know maybe a report writing you know skills so so you need communication skills to write you know uh, those kind of reports which can provide uh, the and uh, you know can can interpret the analytical data uh so that that's you know one uh and then there are you know uh, aml uh, practices benchmarks etc that's something that we'll have to really uh, really do and you'll have to go to that extra mile in my view and there is nothing uh, uh less than continuous emphasis on on training and retraining of the people absolutely thank you so much thank you so much for sharing your insight on this and i personally agree that continuous training is absolute requirement because the trends are absolutely changing whatever we may have learned yesterday probably may not be so relevant today so this field is a such a dynamic field and so is the skill set requirement so my next question to you charanjit ji is in in recent past i have come across some situation where fius are not happy with financial institutions because of lot of false positives so how can trained staff can help reducing those kind of false positives and also as joginder ji rightly mentioned about report writing and communication we have also seen fius not happy the way the staffs are communicating with them so can we really work on that part can we increase the effectiveness of communication between regulators and the financial institutions yeah uh, thanks pavel so uh, point is fiu is a entity which gets feed from not just bank but from lot of other entities which are not related to banking and they get loads and loads of data uh, it is like looking for a you know thing in a haystack and they have to analyze and go through all that now from bank perspective uh, sometimes what banks think is uh, it's better to report than not to report so they will just dump everything and anything on the uh, regulator saying if we don't report they will fine us better report everything let them uh, uh, search for what is what is it they need out of it that's where fiu they come back heavily on banks so we have seen them even writing letters not just phone calls they write to the bank ceos saying you need to look at uh, risk based reporting don't waste our time by sending us such uh, a kind of reports so that's where uh, staff uh, ideal staff should know that if i am sitting at a fiu this is my reporting requirement which i must do if it is meeting the reporting requirement report the patterns are clearly communicated the reason for reporting is clearly communicated for example a person who has deposited uh, 500000 in a account a uh, uh, cash uh, maybe it requires reporting but if you look at customer profile customer has recently retired and received that money as gratuity 
and uh, he uh, took that uh, money out of another bank account because he or she is old person they did not want to do electronic transfer they took money out of x bank account deposited it in y bank account so the amount involved is high but look at the context of reporting so if you are reporting if your reporting requirement is report suspicious transaction while it may look like a suspicious transaction but it in reality is not a suspicious transaction because there is a underlying transaction beneath that so this is what regulators want from uh, reporting entities that you you tell us the reason why you are reporting it don't blindly follow the reporting line and uh, our trained staff and experienced staff they can uh, find out a difference between a uh, reporting just for the sake of it and a risk based reporting maybe there's the quantum of money in a single deposit it's not very high but the transactions are not matching profile of the customer so if it comes out fiu might want to integrate other accounts of that particular entity with other organizations or maybe track it based on a national id and they will create a picture uh, that's where training uh, proves very effective because you know what kind of latest frauds and trends are happening and you train your staff that this is the new modus operandi of a, a money laundering technique and this is how you can detect them thanks wow this was one of the most insightful panel discussion i have ever attended i personally enjoyed this session really i myself from nt fraud profession been into aml domain for pretty long time but the kind of insight i have received today was something very new for me and i'm sure all the viewers of this webinar would get advantage of their knowledge and experience with this session we would have understood the importance of continuous learning and education fraud is a field which is constantly changing constantly evolving so when frauds are evolving so should be the skill set of anti fraud professionals it is very very important that our employees are professionals are very very trained on anti money laundering procedures capage is proud to have accredited partnership with global compliance institute gci in india where we provide all compliance related certification courses in india including aml kyc compliance fatca crs understand better about our certification courses and advantages for you please log in to www.capedge.com we will be really happy to support in your journey of skill enhancement and improvement thank you so much for logging in our, with us thank you so much for attending this webinar stay in touch with us thank you so much namaskar